counterpoint. So I guess all those people that shouted out Hang Mike Pence should have been choked out cold if possible. Ooh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, We're good. We're um, good. cool. So, um, yeah, so I'll just uh, highlight my view real quick because I I'm wondering how much we're going to agree on and how quickly we'll be able to get there. Okay. So my thing, my thing is, uh, from my perspective, I think it's justified up to the homicide, basically. And the homicide, I would have to have, like, additional details in order to, um, you know, care. And then I also want to, I don't want to set, like, a perverse incentive uh, precedent where we basically tell people that they're not allowed to defend themselves. Um, so I'll kind of walk you through it real quick. Yeah, so, go for it. Um, if, if I was on a subway car, even in New York City, uh, which I know is like a super progressive place where you're just supposed to ignore homeless people, you know, screaming and pooping their pants and all that kind of stuff all the time, <laughs> um, I would still uh, say that if somebody walked onto a, you know, subway car and they said, I don't give a fuck, I'll go to jail, um, you know, I don't care about going to prison, blah, 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 blah. And if everybody in the car felt threatened, then I'm perfectly fine with him, uh, whoever the gentleman, Mr. Penny, I think, uh, Mr. Penny intervening um, and basically yoking this dude up. And then also people holding him down while they're waiting for police. That That's all good to go in my book. Then the only thing where it starts to get a little dicey for me is basically I think that you can do a chokehold position where you have like your, you know, the, the neck is a pretty powerful tool. It's a pretty powerful sure. you know, fulcrum on the human body. Um, so I'm okay with you being wrapped around that and basically uh, being on the guy like you're a backpack that he has to carry. I'm fine with that. Um, and then I also don't mind you holding that position. Uh, basically, that way, if he does fight or do anything crazy or pull a weapon, you can choke him out real quick. Um, but where I think it goes a little bit crazy for me is if you're applying pressure to his neck for the alleged duration that was done. Um, so, yeah. So you mind walking me through it for from your perspective? Yeah, so I don't I don't entirely disagree with all of that. Um, I think we both agree that the the hold position, as long as it was held, is uh, a line that's crossed. I don't know if we necessarily agree on the charges that he's being uh, presented with, but I think you do believe that that is a line crossed, correct? I so I don't know or possibly. Um, and in the yeah, and the reason why I would say is because uh, I did this um, as a law enforcement officer after. The, the chokehold uh, ban had been established, like literally, I think it was after Eric Garner was when it almost went nationwide for chokeholds okay, to be gotcha. banned by law enforcement. And so um, I, I got somebody in this position. Um, they were high out of their mind on cocaine. Um, they were also drunk on like two liters worth of vodka. Um, and I did put them in this position. But then what I didn't do is I didn't choke them out. So I basically right, got right. him in this position. So, you know, I know that they were saying that they restrained him for 15 minutes. But I don't think that anybody can really know without consultation from the lawyers or a direct admission from him himself whether or not he was literally constricting his trachea and okay. his major arteries for 15 minutes. Because for all I know, he could have just been in that position and just kind of holding that position. Mm -hmm. And whenever you know Jordan Neely went crazy, then he applied pressure. Um, obviously, it's still a problem because the dude died. But then right. I would also want to look at like mitigating factors like uh, an autopsy or a chem report or whatever. Well well, then I guess the, the question would be, is, do you think Neely was, uh, should have been charged with something? Not Leo. I'm sorry. Jesus, Penny. fuck. Penny should have been charged yeah, with Penny. something. Yeah. Yeah, um, but I would hope that a grand jury would dismiss it relatively quickly, um, unless there was some kind of, like, immediate cause okay. for alarm. Where, like, so, if you check his social mystery... If you check his social gotcha. media history and he's like, oh, man, I've been on the I've been on the subway, you know, 10,000 times and there's all these, you know, uh, black homeless people sure, that constantly sure. talk shit. I can't wait till I can choke somebody out, then maybe proceed with the case. Uh, okay. Or if he or if he admits like, oh, yeah, you know, fuck this guy. I blood choked him for 15 minutes straight. Then, yeah, hmm. then I would be like, OK, let's let's proceed. So um, according according to the D.A. during the arraignment hearing. Um, I covered this pretty extensively and I try to be as fair as I possibly could. I don't know if you got to watch the video I linked to you or not. Um, just to recap for the audience, though, is that according to uh, essentially and I might get quotes wrong here, but it's in the video. Go watch it. Right. Is that uh, Penny had held the the hold for minutes. I don't recall the amount of time, but he had he had gone. Uh, according to some witnesses, he had gone limp. Or, or something along that nature, and then he continued to hold it. Now, given the position, it's possible that Penny didn't even see 
him go limp or whatever else, but he continued to hold after X amount of time, right? So to me, that would raise the grand jury to be like, yeah, charge him. Let's go to go to trial. That's enough evidence as far as the grand jury is concerned to proceed to a court proceeding. I'm not going to say that he's 100% guilty of this because I don't know all the facts. No one does. No one knows all the facts. Only people things people know is what that video showed. And the video showed a, a death, a killing, but not the preceding incidents to that or what was going on. So we need to have yeah, that suss well, out in trial. Well, and then this is where we get into uh, societal intent. So, you know, ver versus like what's punitive by law. And so, you know, we, we get into manslaughter, which is unintentional killing, which I, I think that this probably immediately qualifies as. Yeah. Uh, you'll, you'll, of course, have him use self-defense as a justification for why he acted the way that he acted. And then, <laughs> you know, I, I heard this in Destiny's chat. It's been a while since I've been in any courtrooms. But uh, if I remember correctly, based off of my training and experience and off of what somebody else said in the chat, uh, basically, you have to justify the reasonability of your action at each step. Yeah. So... Um, him intervening, reasonable. Him putting in, in the hold, reasonable. If uh, this guy was like fighting and punching and elbowing and kicking, him even applying pressure, reasonable. But applying pressure after he's gone limp or applying pressure for more than a few minutes, not reasonable because right. basically you have a large expectation of death or great bodily harm. Now, if you can turn around and articulate and say like, oh, I, you know, he said that he had a knife in his pocket. So I sure. figured that it would be better to choke him out than to let him get access to his knife. Then it becomes reasonable again. But you have right. to have like each, you know, each yep. sequence. And we haven't really gotten, you know, the articulations. Like obviously, if I if I was uh, if I was Penny, I'd be lawyered up, and I wouldn't be saying oh, yeah. anything until it went to trial. Uh, but that's what he's going to have to articulate. Is um, I think the imminent threat of death or great bodily harm qualifying for defense. I think that's almost a slam See? dunk. He can get that. See, Sorry, I'm not sure. No, that that's we partly disagree on this. I, I'm not saying, but I'm not going to be like one of those people like, oh, you're fucking evil. You're wrong for thinking this way. Uh, mm -hmm. Just to be clear to the audience, I know that your audience and my audience should know this these things. But hey, there might be people in there watching that might misconstrue this. Hence, repeating it. Um, but the reason I partly disagree with this is because to me, generalized threats of violence. I'll be like, oh, I don't fucking care. Put me in jail. I want some food. I'm tired of this shit. Um, I'll kill a motherfucker like if I don't get something isn't reasonable for to me to actually expect harm to anybody because those are those like, are just very generalized like, and this is like but, progressive city brain though I no swear it's God. not it's not it's not progressive city brain would I be would I be paying attention to my surroundings when this goes on yes if he made a step to anybody then that would be okay he had he he articulated intent to do it he is now stepping to somebody to potentially do it then that would be to me when it intercede simply saying it and being generally erratic but not going after anybody is just fucking words like <laughs> it doesn't uh, yeah, actually so... raise to that and and legally speaking it, generalized threats of violence aren't necessarily even considered fighting words in some places so sure okay but but th this is why i'm accusing you of progressive city brain and uh be because like one of the weirdest and funniest trends in this entire like debacle and scenario is the fact that like progressive people and like liberals and like news pundits or whatever they've been coming out and they're oh, like oh yeah yeah they're I've, being had, dumb. I've had dozens, i've had dozens of homeless people threaten to beat me up and i didn't do anything and it worked out fine and it's like <laughs> okay listen like you were uh you know to to quote the great jordan p b peterson you weren't, you know, uh, virtuous because you're incapable of virtue. You right, right, helpless. right. You were harmless. So basically, you didn't even have the capacity or the mentality to act in the first place. You're just lucky it yeah. shook out. Whereas if something bad had happened, you would need the capacity and the will to act. So True. Yeah. But to, to push back on that just a little bit. So the one, art, the one viral take that went around is from the woman that is on the majority report. I'm bad with names, so I don't know her name. It's not repeated. Emma. Emma. Yes, Emma. So Emma she's like, said... She's like the queen of hot takes recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Emma was saying something along those lines, but that's not how I interpreted it. The way uh -huh. I interpreted what she said was, I yes, I was scared. I wanted this man to get help. I did not think about harming him. 
or even potentially killing him. I wanted him to get help. And what that means to me is that there's a bunch of people online. I don't care what political persuasion they are, but they're basically oh, saying, Darwin. Yeah, yeah, they were basically Darwin. saying Neely, Neely brought it on himself and he should have, and that was just the consequences of his actions. And the world is better off with him out of the picture. That is what they're saying. Okay. That's a counter to okay. that argument. <laughs> so, all right. So I, he, here's the thing. Um, <laughs> oh no, people in chat are not going to like my answers. Uh, Mojo <laughs> Ryzen says, counterpoint, so I guess all those people that shouted out Hang Mike Pence should have been choked out cold if possible. Ooh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like all, all the cops should have, they should have walked up behind the entire gaggle of people. They should have knocked them out with blood chokes. And I mean, uh, if they, if they, if they live, to, they live. And if they die, they die. Yeah. To be, to sure. be honest, we're Go all, we're all, lucky that there wasn't more cops a little itchier on the trigger finger there man you've been yeah, in a completely different world right now yeah i could i could definitely articulate uh imminent threat <laughs> of death or great bodily harm on january 6. yeah so um what i was gonna say is i yeah so so i interpret this completely differently and this is maybe i have um conservative suburban slash rural brain where it's like, you know, you approach my house and I don't know who you are that I'll put like, you know, buckshot into your fucking shins. Um, so like, like, you know, obviously you should be like, hey, how's it going today? Who are you? What do you want? Um, before you put 12 gauge buckshot into somebody's shins. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the, uh, so, so for me, I, I do understand this like social, uh, social Darwinian perspective. And on bad days, if I see like a whole bunch of hot Twitter takes, um, I can be sympathetic sympathetic to that perspective. Sure. The only problem, though, is that, like, Jordan Neely, um, like, like, I've dealt with uh, insane people before. I've dealt with people who have paranoid schizophrenia. I've dealt with people who, believe it or not, one of the most common things is diabetes. Um, untreated, like, uh, diabetes, like hyperglycemia. Oh, yeah, it makes you erratic. Yeah. Yeah, it can, it can make you erratic and violent. Um, yep. So, like, if, if for all I know, walking into that situation, you know, Jordan Neely could have been, like, hypoglycemic. I think it would be hyperglycemic would the one be the one that makes you crazy, but I forget. But basically, like, his blood sugar could be off. And I've talked to people who recovered from, like, diabetic shock, and they were not present. Like, their soul or their consciousness or whatever was not present. They were basically, like, a meat vehicle doing crazy shit, like, driving all over the highway, almost getting into an accident, and then uh, starting fistfights with people in parking lots. But their consciousness was not present. So mm, I'm, I gotcha. deeply, um, I'm deeply sympathetic to people who don't have control. They do have paranoid schizophrenia. They do have diabetes. They do have unmedicated psych issues and all that kind of stuff. So they're not in control. And then they receive these social Darwinian punishments from society yeah. where they get killed for ultimately not being in control. Um, so I can descriptively agree that having violent homeless people in your subways is not a good thing. And maybe on the totality, not having those people there, whatever, uh, it's better to have a bunch of pennies in your society than a bunch of Neelys in your society. However, um, I don't think that's what we should be doing. I think we should probably be like, I don't know, treating paranoid schizophrenia and trying yeah. to get people homes and trying to make sure that people have like access to, you know, cheap insulin so they don't go into hyperglycemic shocks and then fist fight people. I would rather start there than uh, let's uh, choke out homeless people on the subway. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. And I, I honestly think that's what primarily was being articulated by most of the protesters that we saw um, protesting for the arrest of Penny, uh, because they that was what was clearly articulated. Again, if you want to to the audience, whatever, watch my video on it. We covered it. Um, but yeah, there was the, you know, there was a, a black woman out there that was saying, you know, he wasn't given, he wasn't given a home. We we're being pushed out of our homes. There's people that have like, mental illness and they need to be treated. Like these are the things that you're all ignoring and instead letting these things fester essentially is what but she see, was getting at. But see, th this is where I would view Penny as a victim of circumstance as much oh, as yeah, I for would sure. view Neely as a victim of circumstance. So I don't know what putting him in jail or prison for five years for manslaughter accomplishes besides maybe like a sense of justice for Neely's family. Um, right. So that, that's where for me, and, and by the way, like if, if this was happening in like Alabama in like a place where like the social safety nets had been like absolutely slashed and there was no like social resources whatsoever. Mm. I would mm. be, you know, banging the drums for like, Hey, you guys have holes in your social safety net. 
um, and basically people are getting fucked over, and as a result, this has happened. But we're talking about like New York, which is like the bluest city in the yeah, bluest. Yeah, but, but blue doesn't necessarily mean blue doesn't necessarily mean progressive. So like they've well, they've it, it doesn't like what, what I'm getting at is just because you're you're in a blue state, and this is especially true in the Northeast, even though they're just they're where most of the progressives are coming from. It doesn't necessarily mean that the progressives are in charge giving the funding to the things that we care about as progressives. So New York has better social safety nets than, you know, Alabama or some other state in the South, Mississippi, what have you. But that doesn't mean that they're enough and they're getting to the people that need it. Neely was clearly in and out of the system because the system didn't have the resources needed to actually help him. They had limited resources. They were overwhelmed. They could only keep him in hold for a couple of days, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That would be my well, only contention there. But the, but this is where we get into like perverse incentives, though. And this is where like you have the conservatives being like, oh, yeah, you know, choke him out, get him off the street. Who cares if he dies? Blah, blah, blah. Is because like when you walk into these situations and creating systems and all that kind of stuff, I think you can create an ideal system that, you know, like maximizes everybody's ability to do well. Uh, but I don't sure. think you can create a perfect system. Yeah. And, and I, particularly yeah. When, when, when you have this like urban density that is like, no, no offense to New Yorkers, but I basically view New York City as like a human rat's nest. Um, <laughs> like, like you just you literally can't have a cop on every subway car or every single street sure. corner or every single whatever. There's just too much shit going on. And so as a result, when you have that level of population density, you are going to have people who are unhoused, unmedicated, you know, falling through the system. And then eventually it leads to like a violent altercation. So I get, I guess that's, um, so since we kind of agree on the way things have unfolded, but we have like maybe a few details that we don't know. And then also we kind of agree that like the system has failed to take care of these people, yeah. which caused the situation in the first place. Um, what do you view as like, uh, the best outcome now after the fact, because for me, it would be go to grand jury so they can at least say that they try to process it through the courts, have the grand jury like review his thing. And then if it's remotely reasonable, then send Penny on his way. And then if you find out something nefarious, like he's just like a secret KKK member who wanted to choke out black sure. homeless people for fun, then you can proceed to trial. Uh, that would be uh, my ideal is like 90% dismissal, 10% proceed. So the grand jury has already convened as far as I'm aware. Um, and he's been, yeah. he has been officially arraigned. So the grand jury has happened. Yeah. He is but, out on bond. That, yeah. After being charged. But I, I so. forget, but I also forget what arraigned means. Um, arraigned. Does that mean that you like went and saw he's, the judge or whatever? He's what been formally mean? charged. Yeah. Okay. Formally charged. Yeah. So, I mean, um, maybe the grand jury knows something I don't, but basically like, I know, I know in a conservative jurisdiction, they would have been like, ah, and they would have like kept it going. Uh, possibly. And, um, Possibly. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Like, but, but I, I think they, well, here, here's the other thing too, is like people, Sitch and Adam, you know, I, I'm a, I, I like their show. Uh, Sitch and Sitch was like, well, how come the police response time was 15 minutes? And I'm like, 15 minutes at a super city is actually pretty solid. And Not only also, that, they're on a moving train. <laughs> yeah. And then also uh, they were like, oh, well, uh, you know, why was there a 15 minutes response time? And there was something else. Oh, like what if if they thought it was so serious, why didn't they take him into custody? And my answer to that is if somebody is not dead, I'm pretty sure like a homeless person getting beat up or choked out on the fucking subway is like an everyday occurrence yep. in New York City. So like yeah. so like a homeless guy getting beat up beat up or choked out is not a national news story. The only reason why it's a national news story is because uh Penny is white, Neely is black. And he died. That's the only reason why it's a national news story. Yeah, I mostly agree with that. I think because the video went viral is because of those things that you mentioned. But I think that's also why it's a national news story. I think that's important, too. It could have easily not gone viral because, you know, the video is what it is. Oh, if, right? they, if they didn't have video. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, then it would just be like it'd be like a newspaper clip on page yep. two of the New York Times or whatever, where it's like. Uh, or not even the New York Trump. Times, like New York Daily. Yeah. Like it might not even yeah. gotten to the uh, national uh, paper of record. Yeah, which which actually kind of lets you know how much of this crazy shit goes on, and like we yeah. don't even see it because it's not videotaped. But but still, like that's um yeah. So so I mean yeah. And then my my only hope is just that like if he is legitimately a good Samaritan, um if he saw what he believed to be a violent situation unfolding he took action in order to prevent you know imminent death or great bodily harm to other people um and then it just went 
a foul, then I would hope that the charges would be dismissed or he would have like a suspended sentence or something like that. And you know, that, that yeah. shit. like I... where, where like he has to be on his best behavior for three years and then the charges are dismissed or whatever. Like, like that's the kind of shit that I, that's the outcome I would hope for. Yeah, I I don't have a specific hope right now, simply because I am waiting for more evidence to come out from the trial. Um, I again like, but uh, as of right now, he could be charged with a maximum of fifteen years. I think that's a bit excessive. Uh, that's how where I'm at with that. Uh, he is probably charged correctly under New York law, but I wouldn't go for the maximum sentence. Sentence. I, I don't know what the minimum sentence is for that because when I quickly looked it up, everybody, every site I looked at said maximum, maximum, maximum. I'm like, no, what's the minimum? There might not be a minimum. So yeah, there might not um, be a minimum. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, so maybe like I don't know uh, if it's shown that he, you know, did wantonly choke him out for 15 minutes and you know all that stuff. Uh, you know, at least five, you know, five or six. If it's wanton, well, if it's if it was a legit mistake, if the jury determines that it's a legit mistake, but still thinks that he should be charged because of the fact they don't want people to engage in vigilantism, uh, then you know I could see three years being acceptable. Yeah, so uh, the, I have a couple of questions in chat that I want to address and just some donuts I want to address, but I also want to address the dynamics of choking perhaps before we move on to the next topic. Yeah, so uh, Barack Drone Bama, uh, thank you for the original $2 for I sympathize with the mentally ill, but please stay the fuck away from me. Uh, you know, agreed. And then also here's a couple of bucks towards Bolt Gun, pal. Cheers. Thank you. I did receive your uh, Twitter DM. I did receive uh, your Discord DM. It is on my list of things to do. Um, I do get paid in another five days or so, like the Patreon. Um, so I'll just convince the wife that uh, I'll pay my car insurance and then I'll spend 20 bucks on uh, <laughs> on Bolt Gun while we're waiting for Space Marine 2 to drop. So I appreciate the donos. And then bum number one for 25, a uh, currency that I'm not even sure of. Can you guys do a side quest in the sense of why this guy has a $500,000 bond and the other guy had a 40 crime rap sheet? Like how much of a threat is, I'm assuming Penny is what you're asking. Um, so I think the only reason why his bond is so high is just because it's a homicide. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, th there is every incentive in the world to go to, you know, Mexico and just say, hey, I'm a Mexican national now, or, uh, you know, I'm not going to return to court or whatever. Um, so that that's why the bond's so high. And by the way, with bonds, you can set up collateral. And as long as you show up to court, then you don't have to pay the 500 grand. Um, and he also had like a $2 million uh, fundraiser or whatever. So yeah. he's not. That Tim Pool even donated to, finally. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think, uh, I, I think he'll be fine. Um, and then when it comes to the gentleman who's like in and out of the system 40 times, including getting into a fight where he punched like a 67 year old woman. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the way the system is. I'll tell you from like a patrolman's perspective, basically what happens is you have frequent flyers, basically people who are out of their fucking minds on drugs or, you know, mental illness or whatever. And then as a result, they get into fist fights, they're trespassing, they're pissing in places that they're not supposed to piss, they shit in places they're not supposed to shit. Um, they get into arguments, blah, blah, blah. And so they just go to jail, like, you know, once every two weeks, once every month, and they just accrue crime after crime after crime after crime. And if they never get um, if they never get any kind of assistance, like getting their medication or getting housing or getting their life straight or whatever, then that's just like being in and out of the system is the way our system is currently set up, which I fucking hate. Yeah, we don't um, try to actually rehabilitate anybody. It's just punishment, like for the most part. It, it, there, there's some programs in prison to help with like job training and stuff, but there's no after prison uh, programs necessarily, or at least not enough of them to actually help people integrate into society. And then there's some states, and I don't know if New York is one of these, but there are some states where you have to pay court fees and fines on top of the fact you're in prison, on top of the fact that you can't necessarily get a job. So, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I was thinking about doing an essay, by the way, I have a I have an essay cooking for y'all right now. It's about whether or not life is worth living. Um, I think it's pretty <laughs> fucking based. And then we're we're just going to like build out a, a series of playlists. But one of the ones that I wanted to do is like a felony is a life sentence. And I just wanted to talk about how if you catch a felony, even if it's like a hot, you know, like a more than $300 burglary charge, as soon as you have that on your record and you can't expunge it and all that kind of stuff, um, or if you can't afford to expunge it, then you're basically fucked. Like yeah. your options are literally like continuing a life of crime or being a dishwasher at Taco Bell. And that that's pretty much like 
you you can really only be at least in Florida, at least where I work, you can really only be like back of the house with a felony. Yep. Like like it's actually it's hard to be front of the house with a felony. Um, so you know that that's kind of tough. And then Bud one two three says, don't agree with choking someone for fifteen minutes when he is in the middle of a mental breakdown because he threatens somebody incoherently. Um, so what's actually weird is I thought chat was going to be a lot more bloodthirsty. I thought they're going to be like, fuck this homeless guy, kill him. Um, apparently not though. We have some sympathetic people. So uh, let's get into. Yeah, let's get into the dynamics of a choke, though, real quick. So I was talking about how, like, if you get into the position of a backpack and then you don't apply pressure to the person's neck, you just kind of restrain them. I have no problems with that. Yep. Um, and then I want to talk about blood chokes and air chokes. So basically, as far as I I'm regurgitating literally 15-year-old training to you right now, but I'll do my best. So you have two arteries right here uh, that run alongside either one of your neck or either side of your neck. And uh, basically, if you get like a good hook in, you basically put a V-shaped arm around uh, that part of the neck. My arms are too long. It's actually very hard for me to choke somebody. But if you have nice stubby arms, then it helps. You put uh, that V-shape around somebody's neck, and then you basically squeeze it. And then you, uh, you can grab your own bicep in order to uh, make the V-shape. And then you can push their head down into the triangle of your arm, which is basically what looks like Penny did, uh, because the Marine Corps probably trained him to do that. If you get a good choke in, you can basically knock somebody out in eight seconds with a blood choke. But like yep. you can you can just you can just knock them out. And ninety nine percent of the time, their heart is not going to stop, but it can. Um, so you basically have to be ready to put them in the recovery position. Like I saw somebody in chat say earlier, you have to be ready to do chest compressions if you knock somebody out with a blood choke. Then, when it comes to an air choke. Basically what that means is that your hook, your, your V shape is not in good enough in order to restrict the, uh, the arteries, but you can still restrict the trachea. And by shoving the person's head down onto uh, the, your arm or whatever, you can restrict the trachea to the point that eventually they pass out. That normally takes about a minute in order to occur. And then just like that, you have to be ready to put them in the recovery position or administer CPR if their heart stops. But um, the, so the problem with him being in that position for 15 minutes and him fighting the entire time is I don't know what Neely was going for. I don't know if he was going for a blood choke to knock him out and then just held it for too long. I don't know if he was going for an air choke because he couldn't get a blood choke. And then he just like applied it haphazardly throughout the entirety of the 15 minutes. I have no idea if he just sat there as a backpack. And I also don't know what the damage to... Uh, Neely's trachea looks like because if I remember correctly the coroner said that it was neck constriction that was ultimately the cause yeah. of death so so did he damage his trachea did he damage his throat while he was doing it like did he apply too much pressure and he actually cracked some of the tissue so it like collapsed in on itself we literally don't know without the testimony of the uh, of the coroner yep. so yeah and and that that was like a point I made throughout throughout my little video that like kind of spawned this a little bit is that to me if someone dies during a self defense uh, situation, unless it is a hundred percent everyone fucking agrees it's a hundred percent self defense, even and even then I'm a little like eh, I don't know because of the McMichael situation. Uh, I I think it should go to trial. And I, I understand that's going to like rub people the wrong way, but we've seen too many instances where somebody says it was self-defense. The cops thought it was self-defense and then something happens and then it goes to trial. And then we find out, no, that guy was just a piece of shit or no, that wasn't self-defense for whatever reason. And that breaks trust in the system. So I don't know a better way to go about it. No, I'm, I'm with you. And then you have those like weird fucked up situations like Trayvon Martin, where yeah. uh, basically you have somebody like, I still think that George Zimmerman, based off of what he said, could be in a justified self-defense scenario, but you literally don't have the other party's, uh, you know, witness testimony. You don't have any video of the incident. You don't have anything yep. like that. So as far as we know, uh, a middle-aged gentleman was playing cop in his neighborhood, which, by the way, you can play cop or whatever. But then he is tracking a young black man who uh, Trayvon, according to some people that I know, did not have the most stellar of reputations. Um, and then he tra but he did live there. He did have a right to be there. His dad's house was in the community. And so George Zimmerman follows this guy. That leads to an altercation where Trayvon basically doubles back in order to confront Zimmerman, which, by the way, you can do that. If somebody's being fucking creepy in your neighborhood and they're following you around, you want to make sure that yep. they're not a serial killer following you back to your house. You can double back and say, hey, bro, what the fuck? 
Um, but then a fist fight breaks out. Uh, George uh, basically gets on the wrong end of the fist fight. I think his nose was broken and he had scratches on the back of his head. Yeah, he got his head hit in the him. pavement. Yeah, which is consistent with him being put on the ground. And then he pulled a Keltec, which is like a dog shit pistol, and put a fucking pi uh, pistol round in his in this teenager's chest. So, like, that's fucked. But there's no clear answer on, you know, what you should do in that scenario. Because Trayvon, even if he was a nefarious character, does have the right to be in that neighborhood and does have the right to confront somebody if they're stalking him. And and, and then, under Florida law does have the right to stand his ground against Zimmerman for yeah. stalking him for so long. <laughs> this is why yeah, I'm not then, pro vigilanteism. <laughs> well, and then George Zimmerman has the right to walk around in his own neighborhood yep. with a concealed weapons, uh, a concealed weapon. And um, he doesn't have to break off uh, him following somebody if he thinks that somebody is uh, committing a crime, even if a dispatcher tells him not to do it because it's a dumb idea. Yeah, it's per so. a prevent perverse incentives all around. That's why I just tell people not to do it. Like as bad as it is, yeah. call the fucking cops if you think something is seriously going on. It's not going to necessarily get there in time for do whatever you said. No, well, so and, uh, ju just give me a second. So uh, Nikki in my chats uh, is taking issue with the the just the uh reputation that you brought up of trayvon martin just to be clear he's not saying that trayvon martin was a bad guy or um or anything like that it's just like even if that was the case based on knowledge that he knows that's not justification for what happened well well i'll give you yeah i'll give you a, a little inside scoop or whatever because th this is actually something in orange county it's kind of like a, a little scandal at the sheriff's office level so allegedly, okay, I say allegedly because I'm getting a secondhand story from another cop, right? And cops never exaggerate. They never lie. Yeah. They're completely <laughs> truthful, et cetera, et cetera. But allegedly, um, according to uh, a cop who worked for Orange County Sheriff's Office, uh, there, were, uh, there was like cell phone footage on uh, Trayvon's cell phone of him filming himself doing basically like amateur boxing and fights and talking shit to people on social media and all that kind of stuff. Um, basically saying that he was a scrapper, like he liked to fight, et cetera, et cetera. Cool. Um, that evidence was not uh, turned over to the defense. And so the prosecution, at least according to this uh, sheriff's deputy, was open to uh, George Zimmerman and his team coming after the prosecution for not turning over uh, potentially exculpatory evidence during discovery. But then what ended up happening was George Zimmerman didn't pay any of his fucking lawyers. So he was like $10 million. Yeah. So he was like $10 million in debt or whatever, like for some of the best lawyers in the fucking country. And so his lawyer was like, Hey, I would go after the prosecutor for this fucking malfeasance, but basically I'm not going to see another dime out of this case. And I've already wasted fucking so much time on this shit. I'm not doing any more work than I need to. So this is all hearsay. It's all allegedly. It's all secondhand shit from an Orange County Sheriff's deputy. So uh, take it with a pinch of salt, but, you know, I I don't really have a reason not to believe that this was a thing. Um, and, yeah. even, and by the way, even if it is a thing, it doesn't change anything. You're allowed to be an amateur boxer. You're allowed to be an asshole. You're allowed to talk shit on social media. And if somebody is following you back to your house, you're allowed to say, hey, bro, what the fuck? So, you know, it... it, it it changes something where you can read into the psychology of the participants a little bit more, but it doesn't change anything in like actual prosec prosecutorial outcome. Right, right. Yeah. And and Nikki, I, just, I think you're misinterpreting this, to be honest. Um, it, the guy could have worked. Did, did the guy work in Samola County, the Orange County mm -hmm. deputy? Did, Orange did County. he work there? Yep. No, no, no. no. Uh, Nikki is saying that this happened in Sanford, Florida some mole county not orange county so i don't know how relevant that is i don't uh, but it doesn't yeah. it doesn't it doesn't really matter if the guy that's telling the story was at orange in orange county at the time so that's um yeah it's like lake mary or whatever i know what you're saying Where yeah i just i just want to you know i don't want to get too bogged into the weeds in this i just want to push back on it a little bit because no, i like understand what, well, what, I kind of I kind of want to Google it real quick and see where it was prosecuted. Where was? Yeah, she she's saying that she doesn't believe your cop story, not you, but That's the guy fine. that told it. <laughs> That's fine. Um, state of Florida, and then I'm just I'm just reading this for my own edification. So if you want to, oh no, it was prosecuted in Seminole County, Florida. So, okay. Yeah, and then go. so 
here, here's a, here's the other thing too, just to give you a little bit even more shade on this thing. So I went to, I heard this during the academy. Um, so basically like my academy uh, when I went to it and the academy that I went to is in central Florida and it's one of the better academies that's out there. And we do have uh, people from all over. So we have, you know, Belle Isle, Seminole County, Orange County, whatever. So I know the guy was a sheriff. I'll tell you that much. Uh, whether or not he was Orange County or Seminole County, I can't tell you. Uh, so again, t take everything with a pinch of salt. Uh, but ultimately, I don't think it's necessarily relevant. Uh, and then just uh, catching up with a few of my chat chatters. Uh, Bum number one says, is life worth living? Sounds like an emo song. I used to be an emo kid, so that makes sense. Uh, Vlad the Kebabber ain't here yet. He is our resident racist. Um, so I guess we have to stop the show until he shows up. Um, <laughs> so, uh, no Martell chair? Bum number one, you would have to explain that. So, Bum number one says that uh, you lose the debate because you don't have a Martell chair, but I don't know what Martell is. So I don't know I what that is either. Debate. I have a Secret yeah. Labs chair. So, yeah. whatever. So, yeah, and then uh, a, lot of, a lot of the chat is turning out uh, against George Zimmerman. Weird story. Fair enough. Um, a gun store that I used to work at. Uh, so George Zimmerman was originally going to get a booth at the Orange County Gun Show. Of course he was. And, he was selling. Yeah. He was selling signed guns, right? Like something well, it, stupid. It, it was, and he skittle was also packs. Selling. I think he got moron. the Caltech. I think he got his pistol back from Oops. the sheriff's deputy. Yeah, he uh, auctioned that. Company, yeah, he auctioned that. Somebody yeah. bought it for like three million dollars or something stupid. Right. So he was basically selling off merch to whoever would buy it in order to help pay off his legal fees and all that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, <laughs> so a gun store that I used to work for, basically because he got asked to leave the Orange County uh, gun show or whatever, um, the gun store that I used to work for or whatever, they invited him to have an event. And uh, so I, I got to meet uh, George Zimmerman's Rottweiler uh, because he had like a, a defense dog that he brought with him everywhere. And the Rottweiler was great. So I can't speak for George Zimmerman, but the dog was really nice. So, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, mo Fun moving on story. from this, moving on from, uh, you can't flim flam the Zim Zam. 